Hey, Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mock. Welcome to Philadelphia Eagles Now. I'm going to jump into some more news and rumors here on a Tuesday, looking at some available free agents if Philadelphia wanted to dip back into the free agency pool. First, though, you guys have any trades you want the Eagles to do? I'm trying to do a trade mailbag via your trade idea. So if you guys have a player you want to trade for, a trade that you want to do, you want to get rid of Andre Dillard, you want to get rid of Miles Sanders, somebody like that, Derek Barnett, let me know what that trade is down below, and I might pull it for an upcoming video. Drop a like for that one as well. Uh, I'm trying to get that one done, hopefully later on this week or maybe early next week. All right, so I want to jump into some of the remaining free agents who are actually out there that the Eagles could go ahead and sign. I know what you're saying. You're saying, Thomas, what are the odds they actually go sign somebody? I'd say very, 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 very low, like 10% chance. However, I said that, you know, a couple weeks ago, and they signed your Quisky Tart, which I got out of nowhere. It wasn't even on some of the lists that I had put out in video form over the past couple of months. So I decided, you know what? Who are the top five best remaining free agents that make sense for Philadelphia? Let's at least take a look at them. That way we aren't surprised, at least I was, whenever they signed them or potentially signed them like we were whenever Tart went to happen. Now, again, the odds of them signing any of these players I think is very slim. I want to emphasize that. I'm not saying they're going to go sign these players, but we at least should be knowledgeable and know who is out there in case Howie Roseman makes one more move, maybe a couple more moves before the start of training camp. Uh, okay, let's jump in. No particular order. And Dominican Sue. We've mentioned Dominican Sue's name in the past. It was a couple months ago. He remains unsigned. It's very strange that he remains unsigned because even though he technically is a shell of himself, he no longer is the most dominant defensive tackle in the National Football League, and he really once was way back during his Detroit days, he still is productive. I mean, look at the, the, the stats in 2021. This is a nose tackle, too. It's a D tackle. I mean, he can move inside and outside, but this is truly a defensive tackle with six sacks, 13 quarterback hits, and 27 total tackles, seven TFLs. Like, that's not bad. That's pretty good numbers. I'm not sure why the Bucks haven't re-signed him, but for whatever reason, he remains currently unsigned. I think he would make sense in Philadelphia if, and that's a big if, if you definitely don't feel confident in some of the backup defensive tackles that are currently on this roster. Like, as you look at the depth chart, they don't necessarily need him, right? You drafted Jordan Davis for Pete's sake. Why would you ever try to take snaps away from Jordan Davis? But Fletcher Cox is aging a little bit. How much is he going to go ahead and play? And what do you have in Milton Williams? I think Williams is kind of a, an emphasis we'll talk about uh, uh, here right now that that, that that is kind of a question mark, right? If Milton Williams was going to be the next stud D tackle on the Philadelphia Eagles, would they have drafted Jordan Davis, right? Serious question there, especially when guys like Kyle Hamilton potentially could have been available or another wide receiver in the first round. You know, it makes you kind of scratch your head on how good can Williams be? Is he forever a rotational D tackle? Because he did flash last year. Or is he coming into a zone, eventually becoming a really good D tackle? I don't know. He's too young to kind of make judgments on these things. And this year is going to go a long way in kind of reviewing what he's able to do. But let's just say they aren't too confident about, uh, with his abilities. In a defensive line that is rotational based, you could see a guy like Ndamukong and Sue making some sense. Uh, kind of like the D tackle version of Chris Long. We always try to find the next Chris Long, but here you go. Another Chris Long comparison, the D tackle version uh, in Ndamukong and Sue. Um, add Rick Pin comment down below. Name a player you'd want the Eagles to sign. Is there one? If there is one, let me know who that is. Go ahead and comment. The pin comment will have posted the top comment you see uh, in the comment section right now. All right, next player we'll look at is Landon Collins. Now, Collins, uh, is a, is, is, he's a head-scratcher, right? He's had injury issues. He's been overpaid. He's played well at times, not played well at times. You know, obviously bouncing around the NFC East with the Giants and the uh, Washington football team. But to me, it's hard to include him on this list, even though he is one of the better players that's available, because clearly Philly liked Tart over Collins. I mean, they had their pick, right? If they would have liked Landon Collins, they would have just signed him. Now, maybe he was too expensive. That could very easily be it. Or maybe, you know, they just don't, be confident, they don't feel confident in his ability to play safety anymore, but it does feel like he would be a very, very, very long surprise shot to be signed uh, if the Eagles were going to do so. I would, I, For me, it would take an injury. We talked about yesterday on the show how Marcus Epps gets, got the blessing from Malcolm Jenkins. He seems to be kind of the heir apparent at the safety spot, although they do have Tart in there. You know, what does Anthony Harris bring you here in year two in Philadelphia? This to me would be a big time signing if there was an injury, but as it stands right now, I think the safety depth chart is very, very I would say safe in what it's probably going to look like. The question is who starts versus who's the backup. But the idea, the, 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 the Dama could sue way more likely to be signed than Landon Collins just based on the fact that Collins' uh, spot was basically filled just this past week with um, the Jaquiski Tart signing. 
Okay, we're in a subscriber battle with another chat sports channel here on YouTube. The Chiefs report, old Big Red and the guys, uh, I think Harrison hosts that one, does a great job uh, here at chat sports, but they're ahead of us in subscribers. They're at 30,557. We're at 30,327. We're trying to get more subs than the Chiefs. Uh, of course, even though they're an AFC team, we still, you know, don't like them. I'm not a big Patrick Mahomes guy. Go down below and subscribe. Help us grow to beat the Chiefs report right now as we are just a couple hundred away from surpassing them. If we do, obviously, we will let you guys know, but I think we got a pretty good chance. You guys are pretty loyal here on the channel. If you're brand new, haven't subscribed yet, just subscribe down below. We all have YouTube accounts. You have a Gmail, you have a YouTube account. Just sign in and hit that red subscribe button. Um, okay, this is an interesting free agent we haven't talked about a lot here uh, over the past couple of months. Quan Alexander. Now, you think Quan Alexander, think, oh man, he's really good with the 49ers, right? And then kind of got moved, then he was a saint. Yeah, you're thinking correctly. It's what happened. The problem with Alexander is in 2020, he tore his Achilles, right? And so didn't play a lot going into the 2021 season. But the problem right now is that the linebacker depth chart is pretty full. But much like the def defensive, ta defensive tackle depth chart, if you don't like what you're seeing during training camp and you're thinking, oh, TJ Edwards doesn't look so great, but also Nicobe Dean isn't ready to go. Alexander is definitely a veteran option that could make some sense. I think he's gotten the majority of his speed and explosiveness back since tearing that Achilles in 2020. Might as well say Achilles is what it was. He played 12 games for the Saints in 2021, and I think that as a veteran presence, if you have an injury or, of course, if you don't like what you're seeing right now at the linebacker depth chart, he could be a real option. I think they're going to be fine at linebacker. I wouldn't add Alexander over a guy like TJ Edwards, but I'm also not at practice every day. I'm not in the meeting rooms, and so I'm not exactly sure how the development of Dean and Taylor and White and Edwards is actually going. Um, what do you guys think? Name the starting three linebackers for 2022. In a base 4-3, who do you think could be the starting linebackers for the Philadelphia Eagles? I'm going to go with... Uh, I think Taylor is going to win one of those battles. I think White is going to be the other one. And then I think the middle linebacker will go ahead uh, and be TJ Edwards to start. I know you got Reddick as an outside linebacker, but he's just kind of lined up a pass rusher. So we don't make him the other outside linebacker, but whatever you can do with it as you will. Give me your three starting linebackers for the Eagles in 2022. Okay, NBA free agency is really, really close to happening, and the guys at our main chat sports page are going to have it fully covered from the studios uh, up there in Dallas, Texas. Make sure you guys subscribe to that channel. You see it on your screen right now. You just search Chat Sports above me or go down below in the description box and click the subscribe button there. We're going to be live breaking down all the news as it happens. They have fun. They party. It's, it's a really good time. It's a lot less, uh, I would say, you know, serious as ESPN. Way more buttoned uh, down and way more chill and a really, really good time. Already seems like John Wall is going to go to the Clippers. That's kind of the first move to fall, and they'll cover that and more. If you guys like the NBA, subscribe to our main channel. Okay, here's a wide receiver. We'll mention two more to go ahead and end today's video. Will Fuller has been mentioned a lot here on the channel. Remains a uh, uh, a free agent. I don't think to a big surprise, right? Now, there is the argument that, well, what if Pascal's no good? What if Watkins takes a step back? What if Rager doesn't play very, very well? Maybe you need another wide receiver. And sure, it's possible. Although I like what they have in terms of unredrafted free agents. I think they're fine at wide receiver. And again, I'd like to emphasize the start of today's video. The odds of them signing one of these players is very, very slim. But Fuller, to me, is one of those head scratchers as why he's still available. The only thing that I can think about is that it's just had so many injuries. I mean, he has had so many I mean, he has hand injuries, lower body injuries. I think he had a, a concussions as well. Plus, he also played great in Houston before testing positive for PED. So there's just a ton of issues surrounding him. Again, much like the rest of these, as we emphasize, unlikely to be signed by Philadelphia unless they have an injury. And then if that's the case, he's definitely a name you'd want to go ahead um, and grab. In terms of wide receivers, who leads the Eagles in catches in 2022? Who do you think leads Philadelphia overall in catches? Give me that uh, uh, pick. Is it Brown? Is it Goddard? Is it is it Smith? Is it somebody else? Who leads Philadelphia in catches? I want to know what you guys think down below right now. Okay, final player on the list uh, is Odell Beckham Jr. And you might have clicked this video because you saw him in the title, you saw him in the thumbnail. And we have to include him because of free. He, 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 he's probably the top free agent available right now. It would make some sense for Philadelphia. I think any team getting him when he's healthy is getting a really, really good player on the outside. But why hasn't he just been signed by the Rams? Like, it makes no sense as why he's still a free agent. Sean McVay talks about how much he loves Odell Beckham Jr. Odell crashed his wedding, and it was all good fun because they're good buddies. But why does he remain unsigned? Is there something else going on? Does he want more money? Do the Rams not think that they need him anymore? I don't know, but I'm surprised that OBJ is not a Ram again up to this point. I think he will be. But again, if you get to a point where you're looking at your depth chart and you say, you know, we could use Odell. Maybe Odell's a number three instead of Quez Watkins. Maybe you get that point. Maybe you don't. I don't know. Uh, he definitely is an option out there. I'd just be fascinated to see how much Odell Beckham Jr. wants, right? Because he, you know, played well for the Rams, but it was also on the Rams. And he also tore his ACL in such a late playoff game. You know, it's like, I, I just don't know what you're getting out of him uh, or how much money that he wants. And so that'll be a curious thing to follow. But he remains unsigned, so he must conclude on our list of the five best players available that would make sense for Philadelphia to some degree and some level uh, on today's video.
Okay, make sure you guys again subscribe to the channel. Playing more content coming up over the next couple of days and weeks. News and rumors. We're going to do a mailbag video, as we always do. And help us, again, surpass the Chiefs report as we're less than 300 subscribers away from getting there. Uh, I, I'm hoping we get to 31,000 here pretty soon as we keep approaching and climbing our way up. Trying to give you guys the best Eagle coverage on the platform on YouTube. And I think we do a pretty good job, job of that overall. Uh, but that is all the time we have for today on this Eagle free agent list. We'll see if they sign anybody. I was shocked they signed Tart, so who knows. Uh, for producer Trace, I'm Thomas Mott, signing off for the rest of your day.